What's up guys, Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can add effects to our materials inside of Blender using the add-on Smartify nodes. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is part two in my series about using Smartify nodes in order to create materials. Uh, you're probably gonna watch, you're probably gonna wanna watch the first video which talked about how to set up your general materials using Smartify nodes. I can link to that in the notes down below. Um, you can check out Smartify nodes by going to the cgessentials.com slash Smartify. Note that that is an affiliate link, meaning I do receive a commission if you do purchase through that link. But let's go ahead and let's jump over into Blender and in this video, I want to talk about how you can add effects to your objects inside of Blender. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the sample ball that comes along with this. You can just go into the bonus section right here under shader ball and um, you can drag that shader ball into your scene, right? So just drag it into your scene like this and it's going to be ready to go. Now note that this one does come with a smart shader applied to it already. I'm gonna kind of show you start to finish how we can set this up. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna add a material to this object, right? So I'm just gonna click on new material right here. That's just gonna create a material with the material output and a principled BSDF shader. We wanna get rid of the principled BSDF shader. We wanna go up into our shaders section. Actually, we wanna go into our node group section and we want to look for the smart shader and we're just going to drag the smart shader into the scene like this now remember that if you have node wrangler enabled which is an add-on up in your preferences you can do an alt right click and drag in order to automatically set up these nodes in here right so now we've got our smart shader plugged into our material output and so real quick what we want to do is we just want to add a material so we're just going to scroll down into the texture sets you can really use any material that you want in this case i'm just going to use this metal 10 material right here and what we can do is we can hold alt and right click and drag in order to plug these nodes in like this and what that's going to do is that's going to add this metal material to your object right here and so one thing that you want to do with your uh, metal material is you want to make sure that you add a mapping node and so to do that you want to go into your node groups right here and you want to scroll down either to the uv mapping or the uv slash box mapping i'm going to use the uv slash box mapping and i'm going to drag the mapping into the mapping. What that means is that means that I can come in here and I can adjust things like the size of the material, right? So notice I can make this bigger or smaller using the smaller setting, just depending on what I'm trying to do right here. And so we've got this metal material applied to our object. Now, when you first installed this add-on and you set it up in your asset browser, you might've noticed that there were a number of different folders in here, right? There's different shaders that you can apply, but there's also some smart effects. And so what we wanna do is we wanna apply a smart effect to this object. And so the smart effects are a little different than what we've talked about before, because what we talked about before was using a mask in order to mix textures together. Well, what you do with the effects is a little bit different. What you do with the effects is you want to actually take an object. So say that we wanted to add this glowing growth effect. You want to drag that node group into Blender right here. Well, in this case, you don't mix these together. What you do instead is you actually drag these nodes into this object, and then you take the output and you plug it into your material output like this. So this is different in the sense that we're not really using a mix node, we're just running it through this node right here into our material output. And so the one thing that kind of threw me with this when I first started working on this and I couldn't quite figure it out is I plugged all of this in and then I wasn't actually seeing anything on my screen. Well, the reason I'm not seeing anything on my screen is because this is actually doing this in rendered view rather than in material preview mode. So what that means is that means that if I want to see what this is going to do, I need to click over here on the button for rendered. So when I click on rendered, notice how now this is going to show up in here, right? And what it's doing is it's applying this green material to this surface. And we can come in here and we can adjust things about this using the functions right here. So first off, we can adjust the scale of the ambient occlusion that this is generating. What this is doing is this is basically using 
the ambient occlusion or basically the recesses in this shader ball in order to simulate where this glowing green growth is going to be, right? So the brighter I set my ambient occlusion right here, notice how the more of this glowing green growth I'm going to get in here. The scale is gonna set how far out from that object this goes, right? So if I bring that scale up, notice how I'm getting more of that glowing green growth in here like this. So we can use this to adjust that up and down in order to get the effect that we want. And so say that we wanted a different effect in here, right? Say I don't want the glowing green growth. What I could do is I could drag a different effect in and I can run the nodes through that. So in this case, I'm gonna run my smart shader and my displacement through this mossy effect right here. We're gonna drag the displacement right here. Notice how this one is a little bit faster. Different node groups are going to be a little bit faster in here. Um, and I should probably adjust this light a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. So we'll bring this up to like five or something like that. But notice how what this is doing is this is applying that mossy effect to our object inside of our scene. I think this one you can actually see in material preview mode. So you can actually make those adjustments in material preview mode if you want to. But notice how, but you might not want to actually because every time it, every time you make a change, it's gonna come in here and compile shaders. Though sometimes this is real time in material preview mode, sometimes it isn't. I haven't really been able to sort out exactly why that is. Um, so you may wanna jump into rendered mode actually. And so notice how we can adjust things on this one like where this is going to show up, right? So for example, I can adjust the facing setting in here and that's going to affect how that material is placed on your surface, right? So you can see how this is kind of like rotating this in here and I know it's trying to like render in cycles while we're doing this, but you can use that in order to adjust um, where that moss is gonna show up, right? And you can set the noise, um, which is going to set um, how tightly this follows the amount that it's facing. You can also adjust the contrast and the brightness. Those are just gonna adjust how much moss you have in here. But that's basically all that we're doing in here is we're just adding a material and then we're adding an effect, right? So this one, for example, I could call mossy, but then if I wanted to do this again, but also on this metal material, what I could do is I could click over here and I could add that mossy material, but then I could make this unique by clicking on this button right here. And let's say that we wanted this one to be painted metal. Well, what we would do is we would get rid of the mossy effect that's in here and we would drag the paint effect in here instead. So you can then you can drag the shader in here and the displacement, and then you can drag these into your surface right here. And notice how now you're getting this painted metal effect on your object like this. And again, this is gonna do the same kind of thing, right? This one, you can set based on the altitude or the height, right? So if I adjust this up and down like this, you can set where that paint is actually gonna show up on the object based on the height of the object like this. And so notice how this paint has kind of like pinks and blues in it. You can adjust the colors that are in that paint like this in order to make this a custom color. But you can basically do this with any of these effects in here really quickly. And so one other thing you can do if you want to in here is there is an option down below on most of these effects for a paint override mask. And so notice how if I drag this all the way to the right on the paint override mask, um, currently this isn't doing anything, right? But what you can do is under the all Smartify nodes, and I don't know why this isn't just exposed as an object or an option that's in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag these Smartify nodes node group in here. This is basically a node group and you can hit tab to go inside of it that contains all of the different node groups um, that are built into this add-on. Well, in this situation, what I want is I want this vertex color node. So what I want to do is I just want to take this and you can either right click on it or you can do a control C, but I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to hit tab to jump back out of here and I'm going to paste this right here. All right. So what we want to do here 
is we want to jump over into your object data properties. And um, you don't want to do a vertex group. You want to scroll down and find a color attribute is what you want to do. And you want to create a custom color attribute. So I'm just going to click in here and I'm just going to call this paint. Right. Let me go ahead and leave it the way that it is for right now. We're going to click on OK. But what we've done is we've created this paint attribute, which we can then reference in this little block right here. So I'm going to click in here for paint. And that's going to reference this. All right. So in our viewport, what we want to do is we want to jump over into solid mode real quick. And we want to jump into vertex paint mode. So notice what this does is this is going to show you the colors of the vertices that are in here. And in this case, right, I want to set this and I want to paint some of the vertices in here with this green color. And you can kind of see what that's doing in here, right? So I'm just going to paint down here I'm going to add some paint here, maybe on this surface right here. And so paint, um, you can set either green or red, right? So if I come in here and I want to add a second color. And so if I hold the shift key in here, notice I can paint some of this red as well. And so if I paint it red, what's going to happen is the red areas are going to get no paint applied to them while the green material that the green areas should get paint applied to them, right? So I've come in here and I've basically done this vertex painting like this. Well, now let's jump back over into rendered mode and look at this. Well, notice how now I've got paint that's showing up where I painted that green in here, right? So if we toggle back to solid mode, you can kind of see that I don't have paint showing up where the red is. So you can manually override this using this paint override mask um, in order to set exactly where those materials are going to show up from your effects inside of Blender. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know if you have any questions about this or what you'd like to see next about this add-on. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do wanna check that out, I've linked to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.